Success on YouTube is generally determined by one's talent, charisma, and editing ability, but sometimes being at the right place at the right time is all it takes to go big, as was the case with the now infamous YouTube channel Behind the Meme. Hello, Internet, and welcome to Behind the Meme. Today a true staple of the late 2010s, Behind the Meme grew to immense YouTube fame for essentially popularizing videos which explained Internet memes. On a regular basis, BTM pumped out mediocre yet bingeable videos covering a variety of memes from troll face to harambe Ooh, look at that face my god he's such a smug bastard he became a darling of the youtube algorithm and was rewarded handsomely with subscribers and that sweet sweet ad revenue but with success comes great criticism and boy did this guy get truckloads of it behind the meme was often accused of single-handedly killing meme culture by making memes accessible to normies he made enemies from pyro cynical to emperor lemon to anthony Fantano and pretty much the entirety of 4chan itself. Valid criticism or not, Behind the Meme's response to the negativity would make him an infamous figure. As eventually, Behind the Meme would release a series of shocking videos suggesting he was going to end his own life as a result of the hate that he received. And he disappeared from YouTube not long after making these videos. So what the hell actually happened here? This is the story of how a YouTuber built an empire only to set it ablaze after a comedy of errors. This is the story behind Behind the Meme. Today's video is sponsored by Keeps, and I want to start the ad off by showing you guys something funny. It's my hairline from videos published back in 2020. Yeah, this thing was on a downward spiral around this time. I remember getting plenty of comments about it left and right. And hell, I don't blame you guys. My hairline was out of control at this time. I didn't want to go bald, so I decided to do something about it, and I got hair loss prevention treatments through Keeps. Here's a video of me approximately six months after starting treatments. And here's another video about a year later. And here's me right now, and I don't know about you guys, but compare this to the old 2020 videos, uh, I think your boy's hairline's looking a lot better. What do you think? I mean, uh, I'm looking like a stud. Keeps offers generic versions of the two FDA-approved hair loss products at a can't-beat price, and best of all, you can skip the trip to the doctor's office and pharmacy. Keeps will set you up with a prescribing doctor online and ship your prescription right to your front door, and in four to six months, you should start seeing results. Look, the results speak for themselves. I stand by keeps, and if you're a guy that's got some anxiety about hair loss, there's no time too soon to start keeps. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to www.keeps.com wavy and use code wavy to get 50% off your first three months of treatment. Our story begins all the way back at everyone's favorite year for internet culture, 2016. While it's impossible to say exactly when memes started to trickle into the mainstream, I'd be willing to wager my Himalayan salt lamp here that it was somewhere around this time. Hell, even your Farmville addicted boomers were posting memes to Facebook by this point. Some might even say memes were being adopted by the normies, people who were previously outside of meme culture. But for these would-be normies, memes were kind of confusing. Yeah, they were funny, but Scumbag Steve, Doge, the troll face, what did it all mean? Where did they come from? A knowledge vacuum existed, a vacuum that would be filled by an aspiring young YouTuber known as Kyle, but you probably know him as Behind the Meme. Hello, Internet. Hello, Internet. Hello, Internet. Hello, Internet. And welcome to Behind the Meme. The Behind the Meme YouTube channel was created August 12th of 2016, a mere three months after the Harambe incident for historical context. This was the dawn of a YouTube empire, and the goal of this channel would become clear after its first few uploads. Yeah, it was a channel dedicated to explaining internet memes to people. Today we have a look at Trollface. <laughs> Trollface was created in September of 2008 by an artist named Carlos Ramirez. He later revealed that Trollface was an attempt to draw another character known as Rape Rodent. My god, look at that sick bastard. His name truly fits that face. Somebody was just raped or is about to be raped around this guy. Everybody cover your buttholes. In 
Nowadays, there's tons of channels that review and explain memes. Hell, I've done this on several occasions myself. But at the time, there was practically nobody regularly doing this on YouTube. Well, there was one guy, but we'll get to him later. Anyways, from a technical perspective, these videos weren't all that mind-blowing. In fact, they were actually kind of lackluster. You had a lot of upscale JPEG images and backgrounds, tacky GIFs, and some of that good old-fashioned Kevin MacLeod royalty-free classical music, baby. And of course, there was the Behind the Meme channel host, Kyle. Kyle didn't show his face and became known for his voice and peculiar speaking cadence. I really don't know how else to explain it other than to demonstrate how Kyle finishes his sentences like this. The song got a lot of attention it hadn't seen since the 90s, being exposed to a whole new audience of ears. So make sure to let me know what you would like to see next and maybe I'll be able to make it happen. But hey, that's the internet for you and on the internet, memes are king. Yeah, he really liked to slow things down for his viewers and the videos were constructed in a very hand-holdy fashion. And welcome to Behind the Meme, where we take a look at the meaning and the origin of your favorite memes and trends. It seemed important to Kyle to explain the memes as simply as possible so those that were not in the know could understand what they meant and what they were all about. He wanted everyone to feel included in meme culture and seemed like he genuinely cared about educating people. While his voice was certainly grating at times and he had a weird and clunky sense of humor, Kyle was just charismatic enough to hold an audience. Behind the meme would prove to be massively successful as 2016 progressed. Memes were entering the mainstream and Kyle constantly fed the algorithm with consistent video uploads, and he had recognizable and catchy thumbnails to boot. His channel exploded, bringing in hundreds of thousands if not millions of views per video, and by the fall, behind the meme was practically inescapable. And Kyle couldn't have been happier. One thing a meme has become for me is a way to meet all you wonderful people who have showed such tremendous support for my channel and videos. I want you to know I appreciate it every time you leave a comment or hit that thumbs up button. It means the world to me. Seeing all the support you've showed to me really motivates me to work harder and better for you guys. And remember, we only get one life, so let's enjoy some memes together. I love you all so very much. I'll see you guys next time. But with great success comes great criticism, and Kyle would get criticism by the truckload. There were three common criticisms that Behind the Meme would receive. One, his videos killed memes. Two, his videos were unoriginal and could be made by anyone. Three, Kyle was annoying. Criticism one stemmed from a theory that many memes were funny simply because they were inside jokes. And as soon as Behind the Meme would explain a meme in one of his videos, the normies were in on the joke and it was no longer funny. So people thought him explaining the joke, as it were, ruined the meme. The second criticism is rather self-explanatory and is honestly probably the best aging of the three. Straight up, anybody could make these videos. Kyle's videos were essentially Wikipedia articles in video form with bare bones editing. Today we have a look at the history of L-O-L. Come on now, dawg. Come on, man. Seeing his channel do so well in this format infuriated certain folks who didn't think he deserved the success he was receiving. And the third criticism, well I reckon this is the most subjective out of the three. Some people were annoyed by the voice, others it was the seemingly hammed up enthusiasm. Hello, internet! There was a growing crowd of people that just couldn't stand this guy and his overwhelming enthusiasm about discussing memes and explaining them to normies. And with these criticisms explained, in November of 2016, the growing resentment for Behind the Meme manifested itself into one of the most entertaining and savage YouTube dramas of all time. It was a drama that set the ball in motion for Behind the Meme's eventual decline. Enter Anthony Fantano, or his meme alias, that is the plan. I've reached a new level of consciousness. I'm on a higher plane. 7-Eleven was an inside job. PewDiePie did 9-11. Anthony Fantano is known far and wide across YouTube thanks to his The Needle Drop music review series. He's a YouTube legend and a living meme himself. On top of his music reviews, around 2015 and 2016, Fantano became more active on his second shitpost channel called That Is The Plan. He even started a series in May of 2016 called Meme Review, which reviewed memes and actually predated Behind The Memes channel. And welcome to episode two of The, the meme, meme Review. Today's meme is 
Dat Boy. Dat Boy is a meme depicting a 3D model. With his finger constantly on the pulse of meme culture, Anthony would eventually discover behind the meme and the growing resentment for his channel. This prompted him to create one of the most savage roasts I think a YouTuber has created in the history of the site. In November of 2016, Anthony would create a fake behind the meme video where he explained the history of the Rick Astley Rickroll, brilliantly lampooning behind the meme in the process and showcasing just how easy it was to make this type of video. Hello internet, and welcome to the Meme Review, where we review your favorite memes. And today, we take a look at the Rickroll. Every time I have come across this meme online, I have liked the meme. I like memes, you guys. Please accept me. This is the part of the video where I give you unneeded history about music, because this is a music-related meme. And I want you to feel like you're learning something, even though I'm saying a bunch of shit you already know. I'm also going to talk down to you like you're six, because you're a normie piece of trash that seriously tries to learn about memes on YouTube. This is the part of the video where I regurgitate information I found on Know Your Meme, but you're so stupid, you think I researched it. Meme began with bait and switch 4chan duck roll, but with Rick Ashley, big big music hit meme, get big, go viral. And many in mainstream places use meme to meme around the world. Rick Astley becomes music god because meme breathes life into his career. That's the internet for you, and on the internet, memes are king. Yeah, Fantano did this man dirty, like fully exposed him in broad day. Damn, boy. Damn, boy, he thick! Now there's a few ways you could respond to a video like this. You could ignore it, you could even better laugh about it, make a response that's funny or make a funny tweet about it, or you could upload a butthurt response video accusing Anthony of being a jealous hater and ignoring the valid criticisms and shortcomings that he exposed in your content. Yeah, I'm sure you've already guessed that uh, behind the meme selected the last option. He responded to this terribly and included a cringy segment with his mom to boot. There's another meme channel here on YouTube who recently decided to mock my videos, channel, and audience for no apparent reason other than insecurity. Crazy, right? Because you're a normie piece of trash that seriously tries to learn about memes on YouTube. See, this is the one thing that made me mad about the whole video, him insulting my audience. And no, I do not speak down to anybody. I specifically write my script so anybody and everybody can understand memes. But who would have guessed that he would get so salty just because we both happen to make videos about memes? But I get it, I'm the new guy on the block, he's afraid because my channel has grown at an amazing rate in such a short time thanks to you guys. But Anthony, don't worry man, we can both coexist on YouTube. That's the beauty of it. We can make shitty videos about shitty memes together. Don't get your panties in a bunch, bro. But hey, that's the internet for you, and on the internet, bitches are king. The only thing you're good at is being a little bitch! Stop being a little bitch! Behind the meme's response to Fantano was received poorly by viewers, and the once muffled criticisms lobbed at his channel were becoming louder. Kyle was becoming a hated YouTuber. YouTube commenters continued to accuse Kyle of ruining memes and made fun of him for being this Weenie Hut Jr. channel that explained jokes to idiots. 4chan in particular had a massive hate boner for behind the meme, and in 2017, they attempted to trick him into reviewing a fake meme they created called Zinzi in an effort to discredit him. But unfortunately for 4chan, Kyle didn't fall for the prank. Rather, after discovering that folks were trying to discredit him, he uploaded a video exposing the plot, also discussing his frustrations with what he saw as elitist jerks gatekeeping memes. Zinzi, Zinzi, Zinzi. It has been all over my comment sections in the last 24 hours. This meme has seemingly popped up overnight. When you go search for Zinzi, a bunch of random videos and images come up. None of them seem to have anything in common though. Hmm. I wonder why. Oh, that's right, because some people apparently don't like my channel and what I do. You see, Zinzi is an attempt to get me to make a video on a meme that makes no sense and really doesn't exist, so I look like a fool and lose credibility. And Zinzi wasn't the end of bad news for Behind the Meme. Things were only heating up. In May of 2017, Behind the Meme found himself the target of a popular video essay created by YouTuber Emperor Lemon. 
This nearly 30 minute long dissection of Behind the Meme not only accused Kyle of getting basic facts wrong in his meme explainer videos, the video also vilified him as a channel that was like single handedly ruining meme culture by exposing memes to normies. The existence and continuation of Behind the Memes channel is dismantling and destroying the culture of memes which has been delicately constructed over the course of two decades. Now, thanks to Behind the Meme, everyone can have a superficial understanding of memes and overuse them as much as they want. Isn't that great? Wait, it's not. Because when everyone knows about a meme, it becomes so diluted that no one wants to use the meme anymore and it dies. Do you have any idea how much faster memes die nowadays? For someone who claims to love memes so much, you really don't seem to care. While Doesn't Anthony's video that. made Behind the Meme seem like a fool who simply couldn't take criticism, Imp Lemon's video very much portrayed him as a threat to meme culture in and of itself that had to be dealt with promptly. And I'm not saying this was Imp's fault at all, but at this point, this is where the masses of YouTube, the commenters, this is where criticism started to give way to blind hatred. People started actively engaging in life ruination, trying to sabotage Kyle's personal life in the real world. In August of 2017, behind the meme was doxxed and his full name and grandparents' home address was leaked onto the internet for all to see, which opened up the possibility for a variety of disturbing actions to be taken by a would-be deranged hater. The only part that bugs me is my old ass grandma is at risk of some foolish prank. Luckily, nothing has happened and hopefully it stays that way. But if not, that is when things do get illegal, so tread lightly. So yeah, people hate me for those reasons, but some of you like me and that is all I give a damn about. After this video, Behind the Memes upload schedule began to slow down. His videos still got decent views, but the dislikes and spiteful comments continued to intensify with each upload. He was faced with constant negativity, and this cycle of abuse continued until March of 2018 after which uploads suddenly ceased on the channel and Kyle had seemingly vanished from YouTube. Kyle would return months later in August of 2018. Upon returning, he released a video in which he expressed YouTube stresses were beginning to affect his mental health, but he did say he was trying to remain optimistic. I have an opportunity that I have been pissing away and for that I hate myself. There's really no other way to say it. It's pathetic that I would allow myself to do such a stupid thing. It literally makes no sense. YouTube is something I have wanted and worked for for years. I have far exceeded what I originally set out to do with it. Now suddenly I just stop? Why? What's the deal? What's my problem? Is it the criticism? Have I lost my drive? Is there nothing left to prove? Do I not love it anymore? Have I gotten too comfortable? To be honest, I'm not exactly sure what it is. It could be one of those things, it could be all of them, or it could be none of them. But regardless of why I consciously or subconsciously have been ignoring my dreams for the last few months, one thing is certain. If I continue down that path, one day when I'm old, gray, and shitting in my diapers hoping that the hot nurse will come in to clean me, the regret and disappointment that I felt for not following through on my dreams would be far worse than any minor feelings I have felt in the past. Life is simply too short to not live, and you only live when you do what you know you are capable of doing. Being the best you you can be in the Unfortunately, the videos that followed this contained no optimism at all. Over the next month, a series of videos would be uploaded to Kyle's channel that suggested he was on the brink of taking his own life. Beginning September 20th, Kyle began uploading videos in which he can be seen purchasing alcohol and getting drunk, all while musing regretfully about his life choices, the misgivings he had been dealt, and it seemed like these videos were chapters in a twisted version of a suicide note in video form. Today's video is obviously a little bit different than what I usually put up on the channel. I just kind of need to get some stuff off my chest. Like magic, we are driving. I gotta be careful. I should be doing both these things, so you won't see much in the driving trip because although I am not good, I am safe and smart. I brought you guys here because this is where I come and think about things. 
I see all the cars. Some of these people might be the pricks that are online leaving negative, hateful comments. And, you know, I just wish that everybody was more positive and you shouldn't, you shouldn't drink and be sad because it's usually not good. Go back home. I don't know. Cheers, you guys. Cheers. Whoa. It's not good. Falling like a dumbass. What's new? Hey, it's the idiot, everybody. Why couldn't people have just been nicer and kinder and just give me a chance? My intentions were always good. Never meant to do like harm. The thing that brought me happiness and that I cared about and that I tried, I tried to make happen and finally made happen was the same thing that brought me so much pain and so much sadness and so much, just so much negative feelings and negative vibes. It was just a black hole of negativity. There's no reason to care about anything anymore. It just, cheers guys. This one's to you. Thanks for being so fine and dandy. You fucking bricks. You know what? I have an idea. Let's play a little game. Everybody likes games. Let's play a game. Commenters that were concerned for Kyle pleaded with him not to do anything rash and instructed him to seek out help. But it seems like it was too late for any sort of intervention. On September 28th of 2018, a video would be published to Behind the Memes YouTube channel that appeared to show Kyle taking his own life. A young life taken far too soon due to vicious attacks from online bullies. <laughs> Except he wasn't dead. The whole thing was a big stunt. In all seriousness, it made me feel super bad that I legitimately had some people worried. While many people understood what he was trying to do here, a lot of people saw this as really distasteful and a manipulative attempt to sort of use a serious topic, you know, suicide, to get back at his trolls and make them feel bad for bullying him all those years. In an address to the confusion that circled this event, Kyle would make a video discussing his true intentions behind the video, or videos, I should say. When explaining his rationale for the series, he candidly explains that the videos were inspired by real feelings he once had. And he didn't seem disingenuous in this, and it appeared he genuinely thought the stunt was in good taste and for a good cause and would serve a good purpose. I'm sorry to have worried some of you guys who thought I might really be dead, but I promise you I did it all for a reason. You see, even though the videos I released were all acting and fake, they kinda weren't. Everything I said in the videos has once been my reality in the last couple of years. And I would cope in ways that I'm not exactly proud of and don't really want to talk about. Let's just say that the videos do an accurate portrayal of some of my weekends in the past. Had I continued down that path, the outcome that played out in the videos may very well be my reality. But luckily, it wasn't. So I created the series to serve two purposes. One was an alternate reality to what I was feeling and what others have felt due to the words and just the hate and just the bad vibes of other people. Hopefully it can help remind some people that we are all humans dealing with this crazy thing we call life in the best way we can. The other purpose of the series was to kill my channel. What do I mean by that? Am I quitting YouTube? Not exactly. But behind the meme as you once knew it is dead. While it seemed like Kyle's hoax was perpetrated with good intentions in mind, his reputation was now further soured within the community. After this, the behind the meme series was canned. Kyle would return for a few additional skit videos, but after a video upload in December of 2018 where he gets his grandma a sex toy for her birthday, Kyle appears to have left behind the behind the meme YouTube channel permanently. Walking away from a YouTube empire over 700,000 subscribers strong. So the folks who felt like Kyle was ruining memes with his channel won. They defeated the evil behind the meme empire. He was no more. Memes were saved. Huzzah. Look, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I feel like 90% of the shit that behind the meme got was totally undeserved. 
In my opinion, the best criticism he ever got was from Anthony Fantano. Fantano's video was funny and used parody to call out obvious flaws with Kyle's videos. Flaws such as the obnoxious audience pandering, the lack of research, and the rudimentary editing, and of course, the notion that his videos could be made by anyone else. These were all valid and deserved criticisms in my view, and Kyle certainly deserved ridicule for the display of unself-awareness that was his Fantano response video. Bitches are king. And that's pretty much where I think the valid criticism ends. The vilification of behind the meme as this dude that was single-handedly ruining meme culture was total horseshit. Unless you've been living under a rock, you know by now that memes are the mainstream and they have been for several years now. Everyone uses and talks about memes, there's tons of YouTube channels that cover them, and they're still existing just fine, in fact, probably healthier than ever. <laughs> yes, everyone consumes memes now, and they're still funny as fuck. It was a short-sighted, slippery slope fallacy that painted behind the meme as this malicious entity that was single-handedly going to ruin a great thing. Yeah, the whole idea that him making memes accessible to normies would like end meme culture, it's just a corny thought in hindsight. And if, when was the last time you even heard somebody say the word normie? Slap the shit out of them if you do, okay? And of course I gotta mention the death hoax. If you hate behind the meme for this one, that's fair enough. I can understand that, but I honestly don't think he had any bad intentions behind this. Like, there was no ulterior motive with it. I think behind the meme naively thought that this was actually a good idea for raising suicide awareness and thought his videos might help someone out or prevent cyberbullying or something. Let's be honest, it fits into Kyle's pattern of behavior of completely misreading the room at every turn of his YouTube career. And with that in mind, did behind the meme really deserve all the shit that he got? The doxing, the constant hate and bullying? Probably not. So if for whatever reason Kyle decides to give YouTube a second chance, hell, I'll give him a shot. But that, my friends, was the rise and fall of Behind the Meme. Let me know what you guys thought about this video down below in the comments section and let me know who or what you want me to talk about next. Slap like, ring that bell, and I'll see you guys next time. I want to give a major shout out to my patrons. I appreciate you guys. Wavy Web Surf out. Peace.